Okay, thank you for reading my latest piece on the three blue chips that are trading on thin technical ice. Given the importance of where we are currently in the broader market, I thought I would quickly give you my uh, verbal recap of the article as well. And one additional ticker that is actually um, also trading more or less in the same patterns that the three are that I talked about in the article. I'm going to quickly look at my charts here so I can better uh, walk you through this in the next uh, two minutes or so. Uh, first of all, we talked about Hewlett Packard and, well, I should back up and say the industrial. Uh, average to the Dow Jones Industrial Average is up about 13.5%, trading very much at a critical spot, unless we get a quick reversal here today, um, Friday, uh, May 3rd, on, back, on the back of the April job support. We're probably going to squeeze higher a little bit. That applies as well for the S&P 500 and pretty much anything else, even over in Europe. Um, keeping that in mind, even if we do get past there, uh, the 1600 mark or in the, S or in the, the industrials past about 1480 uh, 14,838-ish thereabouts. I would think that uh, given where we are in the broader structure in the market, even if we squeeze past there on a daily or, or a couple days basis, we're probably going to retrace and get below that so we get a classic um, pop and flop, you know, breakout, fake out kind of thing that you've heard me talk about many times in the past if you have um, been following me for uh, longer than a cup of coffee. So if we look at the first stock here, we talked about Hewlett Packard. HPQ is a thicker symbol. You know, these aren't very, this is, there's nothing really complicated technically uh, on these charts. So it's very simple, very visual stuff. If we break below um, about 20 on Hewlett Packard, we probably have room down to 17 or so, you know, give or take a few points. It's just very clear. We've had a strong downdraft off the uh, April highs. Um, same thing at Procter & Gamble. PG is a thicker symbol there. You know, big drop after earnings, relatively speaking, of course, for a consumer staples company. We're trading on, on pretty thin support, somewhere near 76, uh, 30 or thereabouts. Again, if we drop below there, probably have, you know, two, three, four, probably about 5% to the downside. Um, and then, of course, Pfizer, we talked about, you know, I think that one's probably the easiest to spot on the chart, even if you're not a chart, uh, chart, uh, and, and you don't have to be a chartist for any of this stuff. That's, that's why I want to point out, because it's very obvious stuff. I think everyone can get their head around. So if we break the basic support line that is, that's in the article, um, that you can draw from the November low up to current, you can see we're at a critical spot. If we drop below there, probably have about, you know, four to five percent lower as well. Last but not least, the other stock that's more or less in the same pattern is, is um, AT&T, ticker symbol T. You can see we had a big um, drop after earnings on uh, April 24th. If you, can, if you pull up a chart, very basic chart, you can see we had a big drop off. We've since consolidated in sort of a bouncy for, uh, fashion, but I do think if we drop back below, say, 37, 37 and a half on that stock, we have, you know, a decent amount to go lower, and I would, and, and by a decent amount in this case, I also think, you know, probably to the something around 35% uh, or so. So there you have it. These are stocks that if, if if and when we actually get price weakness in the broader indices, which we haven't yet seen this year more than just a basic, a little retracement, I would think these are these are four stocks to keep on the radar. Um, if you're long, something potential to, to consider, potentially taking some profits. Um, if you're a trader, you could, you know, if you get confirmed uh, breakdowns, even something to short. So hope this helps. Have a good day.